First question is from Headley Alicia. What is the importance of a post-workout meal and how quickly should you have it? Post-workout meals. God, I remember Overrated. Totally, right? Oversold. I remember when- the Anabolic window. I believe this so much. So did I. That if I didn't have a post-workout meal or shake, I used to literally feel like my workout was a waste. Yeah. Like, oh my what God. am I even doing here? Yeah, well, here and I think we have to make it clear that that doesn't mean that the the science that that proves that there's benefits to it that we're not saying that that's not true. It's no. just overrated. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. you're splitting hairs on the difference. I mean, uh, you have to have so many things in line and and working perfectly to, for that to matter. Well, yeah. what the studies show is that if you eat right after you work out, you replenish glycogen. Faster, uh, so glycogen being a, a form of uh, energy in your muscles, you replenish glycogen faster. But here's the other studies. The other studies show that if you eat later, you still replenish the glycogen. So the benefit, what's the benefit of eating right after you work out? The benefit is if you're going to work out again later. If you're going to work out again later, a lot of athletes do double days or mm -hmm. train twice a day. Yeah. In which case, it's important because for your next workout, you want to have glycogen and you want to be you know ready to go. But if you only work out once a day, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Here's the other benefit. I remember when we first started the podcast, Adam and I would talk about this all the time. This is back when you were competing quite yeah. a bit. And you used to argue, and I thought this was a great argument, that the post-workout meal was important for you because if you didn't have it, it then that meant you had to eat more for the next meal. So right. it was just the time. Right. I've been working out for a couple hours. It's time to eat. <clears throat> if I don't eat now, then dinner's going to have to be twice as big, which is going to be very That's difficult. the only place that I saw I saw that it made a lot of sense was, okay, here I am at that point when I remember when we're talking about this, I'm eating 5,000 calories roughly a day. And just think about how many meals and how big of meals that is. Mm -hmm. You, If I get behind, so if I'm not eating it, and this this goes back to the eating every two to three hour myth also. It's like, yeah, that's a myth and that's splitting hair is the difference to do something like that too. But when you have somebody who's having to consume that many calories, mm -hmm. yeah. I've got to stay on top of it. i got to be eating every two, three hours. So then if I drive, like, so if I have a meal, which I don't want to have a meal right before a workout. That's I'm not going to be uh, using it. I don't want to be, I don't want to throw up. So I want to have ate, ate a meal at least an hour to potentially two hours before a lift. Then you drive to the gym, you lift for an hour, hour and a half. Like when I was competing always around that time, especially if I was doing some post cardio stuff. And then to think I was going to drive home shower and then, and then go eat another meal. You're talking about a four hour potential gap that I'd have between meals. Now I'm playing catch up on a thousand calories right. is, which is just crazy. So it always helped me to like have something right away post workout. Mm -hmm. And then when I got home, I would eat again to stay on top of it. Right. That, that makes sense to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, why is this oversold? Cause then my, someone listening might be like, well then why are we, why are we being sold so hard to have a post workout company? Oh, it's brilliant marketing, right? Yeah. So bars and shakes. That's it. If you sell this idea hard enough to people that you have to have protein, right after you work out to tap into this you know, magical muscle building anabolic window. If you sell that hard enough, here's what people will realize. They're going to go to the gym and they're going to be like, oh man, I, it's going to take me an hour before I can eat because I got to go home. I got to whatever. Um, that means I have to prep my food and bring it with me to the gym. And then I'm not going to have a microwave to warm it up. What, what else could I possibly do? Oh, a shake. That's perfect, right? Yeah. Protein shake. Much we easier. We provide the you know the the product that's perfect for you to have post workout, and so they sold this hard, knowing that it would sell shakes and bars. Uh, the reality is, it doesn't make that you believe it or not. Too, there's also a, a small category of people. This is a bad idea. Yeah, right. I'm glad you brought that up because that was mm -hmm. something I remember. We I think who was that? Was it Rob Wolf or who did we talk to? Uh, I we, believe it uh, might have been Chris Cresser. Oh, was it Cresser? Yeah. I remember it was one of those guys that we talked to and talked about. You know, nobody talks about. You know, after you train, especially if you train intensely, like mm -hmm. CrossFit or a high intensity workout, the inflammation that's going on in the body, and then it, that puts you at, at risk of potentially inflaming the gut, right? If you take in a protein shake right away. Well, and then you have leaky gut. Right. Because you're eating food, you're already in an inflamed state, the gut is not uh, functioning as well. And so if you have, if you're prone to gut issues or if you're having gut issues, you might want to wait an hour or so for the inflammation to come down before you eat. So, uh, so aside from that, it's oversold, not that big of a deal. Um, if you like a post-workout meal, uh, go for it. I, I like it. I like having a post-workout meal. It's like, it's a nice way for me to finish my workout. Um, but if you don't, no big deal.